Good afternoon, and thank you for attending our latest update on the 2019 novel coronavirus, or COVID-19. As of this afternoon, we have 33 Pennsylvanians who have tested positive for COVID-19. In addition to the cases we released in our morning update, we have two adults from Delaware County, two adults from Philadelphia County, and one pediatric patient from Monroe County. To date, there have been more than 300 Pennsylvanians who have been identified for testing. More than 140 of those have tested negative. 33 have presumptive positive tests. Six of these tests now have been confirmed by the CDC as positive. And nearly 130 tests are on their way to the lab or being processed at the lab now. So pending means not just at the lab, but on the way to the lab. It's an important distinction. There is also the one patient who doesn't count towards our numbers, who is from another state. And so I'm going to stop saying a certain number plus one and assume we all know what we mean now. It is important for everyone to remember that this is really a very rapidly changing situation. The guidance that we receive from the CDC, especially about testing, testing guidance, changes daily. We are getting calls from concerned Pennsylvanians about whether or not they should be tested. If you do not have any symptoms, you do not need to be tested at this time. If you have very mild symptoms, like a, like a stuffy or runny nose, that could be a cold, that could be allergies, you do not need to be tested at this time. But if you have the following symptoms, a temperature of over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, shortness of breath or cough, Please call your health care provider. They will help you determine if your symptoms are in line with or consistent with COVID-19 and if you need a test. If you do not have a health care provider and have these symptoms, we really recommend that you call the emergency department at a hospital and not just show up because if they think that your symptoms are consistent with COVID-19, they will take precautions. Please don't go directly to the emergency department. Call first. There have been questions about, from doctors of who doctors can test and what permissions they need to do from testing. If a healthcare provider feels a patient should be tested, they can order the test now without consulting us. There are commercial laboratories that work with providers, that work with hospitals and health systems, um, uh, and will work with them on specimen collection, transportation, and testing. So there are at least two commercial providers that will do that now. There are more coming up next week. And we are aware of, of hospitals and health systems that are working on developing their own tests so the test could be done in-house from a hospital or health system. If the provider would like to consult with the department um, to determine if a test is required, that's fine. And please call us at 1-877-PA-HEALTH, and we welcome those calls. If the provider consults with us, and we don't recommend a test but the, uh, because of CDC criteria, but the provider really wants to do a test, then order it and send it to a commercial laboratory. You do not need our approval to send tests to the commercial laboratories. And we will get those results through our information system, our negative, positive or negative results, so that we'll know the numbers. Now. It's very important that every, everyone remember that there are very simple steps that people can use to protect themselves from the spread of contagious diseases, including COVID-19. Please wash your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds, the time it takes to sing happy birthday twice. And use hand sanitizer if soap and water are not available. Cover coughs and sneezes with your elbow and not with your hands. Please try not to touch your face, because if you touch a surface and then touch your face, that could, in theory, transmit COVID-19. Clean surfaces frequently. And if you are sick, please stay home until you are feeling better. Practicing these everyday simple steps can help slow the spread of this virus, COVID-19. 
For the most reliable information related to Pennsylvania's response, please visit our website at health.pa.gov. Now, as this situation evolves and develops, we will continue to update Pennsylvanians through our website, our Facebook, our Twitter account, our press releases, our press conferences, etc. If you have questions about your health, please contact your health care provider. And we have been working very hard to update providers on how to assess patients and with information about testing, and we will continue to do that. What is most important for everyone in Pennsylvania to remember is please stay calm. We have the networks in place to ensure that we will continue to strive for our vision, which is a healthy Pennsylvania for all. Thank you. Now I'm available for questions. Bar. Bar. Sorry. No worries. that need testing are getting tested and talk about the impact of the commercial laboratories. Mm -hmm. um, so we are striving to make sure that everybody that needs, that needs to be tested um, gets the tests. And, I, I, and we have to, we're continuing to work on all of our communications, like this press conference, as well as um, our press releases and our website and working with the healthcare providers. If, if a healthcare provider feels that a test can be done, it can be done. But it's fine to call us and discuss it at 1-877-PA-HEALTH, but they do not need our permission to send a test to a commercial laboratory. So I think that the addition of the commercial laboratory is, is, is very, very important. And, and then as more hospitals have their ability to test in-house, that'll make tests even more available. But we do have tests available at the Pennsylvania Department of Health. We have tests pending as we speak. We're working with county and municipal health departments as well as providers to process those tests. Um, if the test is done at our laboratory, it's free. If the test is done through a commercial laboratory, they will bill insurance. And all insurance companies in Pennsylvania and <coughs> Medicaid will cover the COVID-19 test. Angela and Cynthia. As the uh, number of cases increase, uh, are you, is the Department of Health considering giving out more precise, specific information about location of cases? So, um, uh, uh, you know, that's been a, a, a big issue that I know that, that we have been discussing. I, I think that we are giving out issue that is uh, information that is necessary to protect the public health. And so if there was information that would be really necessary that would change a public health response, we are giving that information. So we give the counties. We're now giving out information about, about the numbers, et cetera, because I, I think that that's important now. Um, but to know the, the, uh, the township of someone is, I mean, if someone is tested positive for COVID-19, they are isolated. So they're either isolated at home and we and us as well as the county munis are, are are monitoring them or if they're ill they're in the hospital so they're not going to be walking around the neighborhood um, and they are isolated at home I guess they might be in their backyard so it's that type of specific information I know is of, of, of interest but it doesn't serve the public health so uh, we will be releasing whatever information is necessary to serve the public health um, follow up to that so the um, concern that I'm hearing is that municipalities that don't have like a local health board mm -hmm. won't necessarily know, um, like their EMS won't know if they're responding to a household with a sick person. And then that can just spread the virus to everyone. So right. how are you handling that? Um, so, so we'll work with EMS to make sure that, that they can deal with those situations. How like municipalities? Uh, yes, right. We've been in constant communication with our regional emergency medical services council about the best ways to proactively prepare for calls just like what you're speaking about and we're talking in terms of personal protective equipment and how ems providers can best handle calls like that we'll continue guidance just like that to speak to exactly what you're asking about but uh, that we have so few numbers and <clears throat> we don't have community spread um so they don't have to wear like the mask and protective gear for every home yet right I would uh, urge all EMS providers to take all necessary precautions when responding to all sorts of emergency medical calls. And EMS providers are trained to utilize all sorts of personal protective equipment when responding to calls. And are you making sure municipalities that are under your jurisdiction have that information of where they're living and have protective equipment? 
can't speak to the specific location information regarding patients, as Dr. Levine has already spoken to that specifically. In regard to personal protective equipment, I can tell you that the Department of Health is constantly in communication with county and municipal health departments, as well as our federal partners, to make sure that not only do we have stores of said PPE, but also the federal government is aware of where our stores stand and anything they can do to assist. So one final word, if an, if an EMS officer or agency has a concern about how they should respond, call us and we will work it. We, we will discuss that with them, um, with uh, Sec Deputy Secretary Bereshansky and, our, and Dylan Ferguson, our EMS director. So we'll work through that with EMS companies. So call us, we'll help them. Um, it's on our website. I, I don't have all the 33 patients' counties. Well, before the press conference, the total for Montgomery was 17. Have there been cases added to Montgomery? And if so, uh, I have a question. We'll, we'll, um, you pl please ask your question and we'll, we'll check the data with you. Should the counties that are adjacent to Montgomery, which would be Berks, Bucks, Chester, uh, Lehigh, et cetera, is there a greater concern for those counties than counties <clears throat> farther out from what Governor Wolf called? Mm -hmm. Well, um, so we're monitoring this, uh, the situation throughout the state very, very closely. But you're correct that, that most of the cases have been in the southeast, although not exclusively in the southeast. And so uh, we are going to monitor that really, really carefully and help any, any county with what their response. Did you want to respond? Matt and then Mark. Um, I know, I believe it was last week, the amount of testing that could be done at the state lab was increased. Is there yeah. any efforts being done to increase even further as we get more and more tests? Uh, um, yes, I mean, we can run, we've talked about 100, so we've gone from 5 to 25 to 100. And there are some pieces of equipment where we might be able to go more. Uh, we are very dependent upon the supplies, the reagents, which means the chemicals and the kits from the, the FDA and the CDC. Uh, but we are receiving those and uh, we'll test, I mean, we'll work to test as many kits as we can. So just to kind of follow up on that, is your testing limited by the number of kits and regions that you have? So, so we're not limited right now. We, there are no uh, backlogs of testing. So we're not limited right now. Could, in theory, um, if, if everyone in Pennsylvania was going to be tested, we couldn't do that, right? So well, well, why, why not? Why not test more if you have the capacity to do more? Well, why, the, the, why, I, I, sure. Why screen people with criteria instead of trying to test more people yeah. when you have the ability? I understand. Um, so. Uh, right now, Pennsylvania, we have not, uh, we are not uh, working with the CDC. I mean, they're not working with us to do population-based testing. So I am aware that population-based testing can exist. That's not their recommendations for, for Pennsylvania at this time. At this time, it might come to that. But if you're, I mean, if you think of how many people uh, are in Pennsylvania, um, certainly that would that would be beyond our laboratory. So it's not that there's no limitation. It's just that we're not limited at this time. So to do a population-based testing would be. Beyond on us at this time, but it, we might have to do that in the future. But you're not limited at this time because you already are limiting the number of tests that you're willing to do. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I, so you're talking about different ways of, 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 of different ways of evaluating a population. And so right now, the recommendation for us in the CDC is still to do symptom-based testing, to, to do testing based upon symptoms consistent with COVID-19. Um, as I talked about, a fever, cough, and shortness of breath. It might come to a time to do population-based testing. If you, you mean, it's obvious. I'm looking at the population of, of the Southeast, uh, how many tests would be necessary. I mean, that, is a, that would be a limitation for us. We would have to work with the CDC about how, for any, for any state in any area, about how that would be done. Are, and, are you bound by CDC guidelines? Do you have to be bound by them? No, but we would not have the capacity to do population-based testing, which is testing everyone in the southeast, right? But are the private labs essentially doing population-based because no. they don't have the same, they're not obeying the same limitations? No, but, but a, a, pay, a person can't get tested by a private lab without going to a health care provider. Right. And we're recommending that, I mean, if a health care provider feels someone should be tested, they can test them. The other thing you have to remember is when you do population-based testing, a negative test doesn't mean they're negative. Right? If you have no symptoms, then um, uh, you could develop symptoms five days from now, but the, and, and, and the test would be negative, but turn, could turn positive later. But what you're saying is that the physicians who send someone to a private lab 
are not bound by the same no. criteria. No, they don't have to call us, but they're not doing population-based testing either. They're testing patients with symptoms. That's where we are now. So there, there, is, there is something in between population testing and the, and the CDC criteria, right? And you, you can... <laughs> And, and that's pretty much where we are, in between population-based testing and strictly following CDC criteria with, the pri with, with in relaxation of our guidelines, that's exactly where we are. With relaxation of our guidelines and the private lab testing, then we're not at population-based testing, testing thousands and thousands of people, but we're not just following exactly the CDC criteria. So that's exactly where we are. Should we be at population-based testing? Not at this time. Sort of follow up, you were saying we're sort of in between, uh, you kind of relax the guidelines. Uh, can you sort of talk about how uh, those guidelines have been relaxed? Um. So I think that, that, that um, the, the CDC guidelines, although I'm going to uh, maybe defer to Dr. Watkins in terms of exactly the guidelines where we're today, but they have focused on exposure. Do you, have you been exposed to travel history or someone who might have COVID-19? But what I just said is if, you, if a physician sees someone that has fever, cough, shortness of breath, you know, uh, might consider doing a flu test. We still see a lot of flu. It'd be extremely unlikely to have both at the same time, but if the rapid flu test was negative, then they should consider COVID-19. That's not exactly to the CDC guidelines, but that's completely different than population-based testing, which would really be uh, a, 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 land, a landmark change in terms of how testing would be recommended by the CDC for Pennsylvania, and so that, we're not there yet. Chelsea, then David. Could you, kind of two-part question, could you talk about social distancing? We yes. have been hearing about um, the, the funeral for the Cumberland County firefighter who died, his funeral is tomorrow, and they're expecting a 1,000 people to show up. Some EMS providers have um, raised concerns over that happening, and if you could just talk about maybe why. We so we have no documented case in Cumberland County. We would, have, we would have told you that. No, I'm saying for the funeral tomorrow. There's just a, there's supposed to be a 1,000 people gathering. Oh, I see, I see, general, yes. Right. Social distancing is well, social distancing is important, right? The, 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 uh, the COVID-19, unlike something like measles, uh, could travel through air for uh, probably up to six feet. It's probably a little less, but so let's say six feet. And so if you are six feet away from someone, then you're much less likely to be exposed to the virus in terms of the air droplets. So if they sneezed or they coughed, it's not going to travel more than six feet. And so we want people, if possible, to be six feet away, if that's possible. Uh, we also want people to not Touch a, I mean, if it's touch a surface and then touch their face, because if, if it lived on the surface, you've now touched your face, it's more easily transmissible. Uh, and then wash your hands 10, 20 times a day, as I described. Use, um, uh, use hand sanitizer. If someone does cough and sneeze, to do it into your elbow. And be honest with you, uh, even though it's a funeral, if someone is sick, please stay home. David? Dr. Hi. Um, um, I know you're aware for example, Dr. Fossey now, I think, has clearly said there has been, we don't have enough tests. We haven't had enough tests. Mm -hmm. And I think, I'm pretty sure he also acknowledged, um, and others have that, one of the big consequences of that is like that shortage will cause people who probably may well have needed a test not to be tested because of the shortage. And then, of course, you know, then they're walking out the door and into the community and possibly spreading it. Um, it sounds like you and your department have been consistently telling us, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, yeah. but it sounds like you have been saying Pennsylvania has avoided that situation. I, I think that what, what, what I've been trying to articulate is that, that, is that following either CDC criteria or somewhat relaxed CDC criteria, we have the capacity to do those tests. Um, and so if a doctor calls up and, and now, according to what I just described to you, we have the ability to do those tests. And the addition of the commercial laboratories is great because they can just do the test. Um, uh, and that, that's helpful. It'll be even better when there's the ability to do testing in, in the, by the hospital themselves in their hospital laboratory. And we know that a number of health systems are, are kind of working like that. Um, but I, I, my understanding of what he's talking about is that if you were going to go to the same type of population-based testing that we were discussing that was done, say, in Singapore, the country, do, the country does not have enough tests to do that. So, yeah. 
I think he also talked about like a leading to an undercount, like it right. results in the fact like we don't know yeah. because of the inability to test it. And I would say like I get what you're saying about the um, like with the commercial labs and the hospitals coming online, but I I think there's a really legitimate concern though if if here in Pennsylvania we went through a window of time yeah, I understand. when that could constraint well, allowed yeah. people to walk out the door possibly with the well, let's go through the history of the testing because it's only been, it has been less than two weeks that we were able to do testing at all. Okay, and so we have made a lot of progress in less than two weeks. It will, on Monday, it'll be two weeks since we've been able to do testing at all. So for, and I, my impression of what he's saying um, is that, I mean, certainly for the first month or more, None of the states could do any testing. Every test had to be, uh, you had to call the CDC. Every test had to be, uh, the patient had to be screened with our staff, with the CDC staff, and the testing was very limited. We were able to, a week ago Monday, start to do testing, and for two days we could do five specimens. And then we could do 20 to 25 specimens. Well, now we can do a lot more. And so our capacity has been continuing to improve. And according to that capacity, we are testing you know, anyone that, that has fit the criteria. And we've relaxed the criteria. So I, I think I'm being pretty clear that, that we are able to test anyone that has symptoms consistent with COVID-19, either through ourselves or through a hospital laboratory if it's up and running, or through that. But the history of it has evolved over the last six weeks, and I think he's referring to that that whole history has been insufficient. Okay, but I just have to ask you this though then, back in then the time when say you, you were limited here in Pennsylvania, only able to do five, did we have missed opportunities? People that we would have caught if we would have had enough tests? Um, there were, if people met the criteria as it existed at that time, we tested them, but the criteria have been continuing to change. There were people that we could have identified yeah. earlier, but they wound up. Yeah, I, I guess I can't promise that there were not people who had COVID-19 somewhere in the United States that weren't tested. But our ability to test has, continue, has, has, has started a week ago Friday and has been continuing to improve. Cynthia? Um, so if you mentioned at the beginning that you have like 700 to 800 tests. That, right? Test kits or? Um, I don't know the exact number. I mean, we, we, we're getting new supplies from the FDA and CDC, so I don't know the number now. like the status of test kits now and how many you have left, how much reagent? I, I don't know. You don't know? No, not specifically, because I know we're getting new supplies and even today. From the CDC? Yeah. Or either CDC or FDA. I don't know which. So we're continually getting new supplies. I, I don't know exact. I mean, I, my, our impression from the lab, our, our discussion with the laboratory director. Director is that we can any any test we can we, he can satisfy any all of our needs needs for testing. But I think that that and I want to emphasize this point is that now that that you can order through commercial laboratories, it's much easier just to, to do the test, and then that can, that will continue to improve. Um, but the country is not at a place where they could do countrywide population-based testing, and so. Um, I believe, I, I, I understand what Dr. Fauci has said, and I think if you put those two areas together, that's what we're, that's what we're talking about. Angela, and then Barb. Um, I have a, a, a two-part question. Sure. The pediatric case that you mentioned, yeah. is this a school-aged child? Uh, to the extent that, uh, I mean, I'm not asking you to, to, to say how old, I'm asking right. you to say if it's a Well, it's a pediatric patient, so it's by definition under 18, so the patient would be in school. And we're going to be working on that. We just got this result. So Hot off the of, press. Okay, great. Um, so then what kind of communication has there been with that school, with the school districts, with parents in that school? We're working on that today. Has and that just, been, just happened. Okay, so there hasn't been any... I, I don't know, actually. It just happened. So we're trying to give you the latest information. We just got these lab results back. I was going to talk about that. Is that the first child or... Uh, that would be the first, yeah, pediatric Dr. Watkins? Patient. It is the first pediatric patient, yes, and it is under investigation and we have no further details. Yeah. And second, if I just may add, right, um, the, the hospitals will soon be able to uh, 
So yes, now not every hospital. So certain hospitals and health systems are developing their own testing. I know the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia can do their own testing, and we've heard that. I know Philadelphia is sending some of their samples to them, and so um, uh, that's great. Um, uh, they don't, they can't supply the state either. But as more hospitals and health systems come online. Uh, and I don't know their exact timetable, then that will be really helpful because then they, can, they don't even have to use the commercial labs. They can just obtain the specimen. They would any other specimen and run it through their lab. Right now, a, a, a physician would either obtain the specimen his or herself in the, in the way just to, um, uh, recommended by the CDC or call on a hospital and say, I have this patient coming and you need to prepare. I think this patient might have COVID-19. They would obtain the specimen and then they would send it to the commercial lab the way they send other send outs. It's not uncommon. Matt, got to be the last um, I, I know we've heard from some doctors who have said they haven't been able to get the testing uh, through the department and they're just not sure where to go from there. Uh, what do you say to those doctors as far as how they can get in contact with these commercial labs? Well, so it, they don't have to send the, they don't send the patient to the lab. These are labs that pick up specimens every day from doctors' offices, hospitals, and health systems. And so um, they should check with their hospital about, I mean, and, and I mean, really check with the hospital and the lab director. If I have a patient, I want to do this test. I mean, they're going to have to obtain the specimen and then they call the lab and they pick it up like they do any send out. So it, it, it's, it, it's very, pretty easy. Well, oh, yeah. and, and we've been hearing that same uh, comment, and so today we're working on some guidance for providers on how to access these commercial labs just because we know it's a new test coming online, and so that guidance should come out either today or, or as soon as we can get it out. I apologize, we have to cut it off, but can, I'm going to... just say how many of the 33 cases have a known source of infection? Can we use community spread? Uh, I believe, and, and we'll check on that, but I believe 32, and one is under investigation. So we have community spread? No, we have 32 where we have known risk factors. We clearly understand with um, confidence where these individuals came in contact with the virus, not community spread, and one which is still under investigation. We can't tell it. So, there has been one. Yeah, there has been one that has been under investigation. It's still under investigation, looking for context. Um, what would be the right word? There, there, um, we're, it's under consideration for community spread, but we're not certifying that at this time. No. Okay, folks. I will follow up. With Thank you. you.